Now, number 11. A division supervisor made an announcement in one division gathering about an administrative complaint still being investigated filed against one head teacher. Was the announcement proper? Okay, so na discuss natin to kanina sa magna carta natin. Is it letter A? Yes, the complaint must serve as warning to others. Ang letter B mo, a uh, letter C mo is yes then. The respondent's identity must be revealed. Okay, so dapat e eh, Ma-reveal na yung kanyang identity. Letter B mo is no. The division gathering does not have enough number of people. So kulang ang uh, mga tao. Letter D mo is also no. The case is still pending. So klarong-klaro, nakita natin to kanina sa ating discussion, according to the Magna Carta, pag pending ang case ay wala dapat publicity. Okay, so letter D, no. The case is still pending. That's our correct answer. Now, we proceed to number 12. The Magna Carta for Public School Teachers has provided for fair opportunity for those entering and those already in the teaching profession. Which hiring requirement is not acceptable for teacher applicants? Is it letter A, ability to use all medium of instruction effectively? Hindi po acceptable ang ating hinahanap pa. Knowledge of the culture of the people in the community? Letter C, interpersonal intelligence. Or letter D, pleasing personality. Ito yung palagi nating nakikita pag nag apply tayo ng trabaho no, sa ating bansa. Kailangan lagi may pleasing personality, which means kailangan may itsura. So, hindi po yan ang basehan para ma-accept ang isang aplikante sa pagtuturo sa ating bansa. Hindi po kinakailangan eh, maganda ka para maging isang guru ka. Dapat ikaaya-aya yung iyong itsura. Siyempre, bilang guru, dapat eh, marunong kang magsuklay, marunong kang maglagay ng konting lipstick para at least eh, presentable ka sa iyong mga uh, students at sa iyong mga parents. Pero hindi po kinakailangan na maganda ka. Okay, napag-artista talaga yung iyong itsura. So, letter D is the correct answer. Sa ibang bansa po, ay walang pleasing personality na requirement sa kahit anong trabaho. Sa Pilipinas lang po, meron yan. Now, number 13. Whose request for transfer of station will be given more consideration? A female public school teacher married to another public school teacher. A single female public school teacher. A single male public school teacher. So, B and C are almost the same. So, that means... We can just ignore this too. Letter D, a public school teacher married to an engineer. So, yung letter A and letter D are the same. But this one is married to an engineer. And this one, of course, is married to another public school teacher. So, klarong-klaro kanina sinabi natin, kag kayo ay parehong guro, dapat eh, magturo kayo sa the same locality. Okay, so letter A is the answer. 14. Mr. Dimasupil developed a teaching technique different from what other teachers used in their teaching. Is it acceptable? Okay, so nag-develop si Mr. Dimasupil ng isang teaching technique or strategy na different from the other teachers. Acceptable ba to? Letter A, no. The teacher should follow what the others use. Kailangan ba gawayahin mo palagi ang ginagawa nila? Letter B, yes. It is his right to choose the best strategy. Letter C, no. The students in his class may not learn. Or letter D, none of the above. Correct answer, of course, here would be letter B. Yes, it is his right. This is under your academic freedom. It is your right to choose the best strategy as long as you know that this is effective. Hindi rin pwedeng choose ka ng choose and strategy, hindi naman pala effective sa iyong mga estudyante. So letter B is the correct answer for number 14. Question number 15. Mrs. Reyes was asked by her principal to teach other classes in addition to her regular 6-hour load. What will be the basis of her additional compensation? Okay, so ano magiging basis ng additional compensation na dito? Is it is um, her basic salary, letter A, letter B, regular salary, plus 25% of her best basic pay, letter C, number of years in service, letter D, performance rating. We know that the correct answer would be letter B. So regular salary plus 25% of her basic pay. Question number 16. The gradual progression of teacher's salary from minimum to a maximum is done through regular increment every year, increment after 10 years of service, regular increment after 3 years, increment every 5 years. The correct answer, of course, stipulated by your Magna Carta should be through regular increment after 3 years. Okay, so dapat after 3 years, ang pagpasok mo sa DepEd, ay okay na, na-reach mo na yung maximum salary scale mo. 
Question number 17. Miss Shalani is assigned in a rural, rural area. Miss Tinga in a depressed community. Miss Didal in a hazardous area. And Miss Arila in a place where standard of living is high. Who is entitled to hardship allowance? So, dinis kasi natin to kanina sa ating section about hardship allowance. Sino ba sa kanila makakatanggap nito? Si Miss Shalani ba na naka-assign sa rural area? Okay, so malayo, no, nasa na yun siya, nasa probinsya. Si Miss Tinga, na nasa, nasa depressed community, hindi natin alam kung ano itong sinasabing depressed community sa ating question. Si Miss Didal, na nasa hazardous area, nakakatakot na area. Uh, Miss Arila, in a place where standard of living is high. The correct answer here, of course, would be letter C, Miss Didal. Okay, so klarong-klaro sinasabi ng ating hardship allowance. Makukuha mo lamang ito pag mahirap ang commuting. Okay, so mahirap na hirapan ka mag-commute, uh, nahihirapan kang pumunta sa um, iyong workplace. At another thing is, it, is if nasa hazardous area ka. Okay, nakakatakot, nakaka, uh, nakalagay ang iyong sarili sa peligro. Okay, so that's 17. Number 18, Mrs. Amulang was not able to finish her thesis after one year of study leave. Still, she wanted to continue her study leave. Could she be, she be allowed? Is it letter A, no, study leave should not exceed one year? Letter B, no, other teachers should have the chance? Letter C, yes, if her grades are excellent? Or letter D, yes, but without compensation? So, discussin natin to kanina, one year lamang ang yung study leave with pay. After a year, po pwede ka mag-extend kung tinatapos mo na lamang yung thesis pero wala ka ng sahod. Okay, so the correct answer is yes, but without compensation. Letter D. Alright, number 19. Mr. Pildido was diagnosed of having tuberculosis that requires rest for more than one year. Which leave should he apply for? Okay, so we've, all, we've also discussed this a while ago. Anong leave ang kailangan mong kunin pag yung treatment mo sa yung medical condition ay mag-exit na more than one year? It should be your indefinite leave. Okay? Not just sick leave. Kasi yung sick leave mo, ipo pwedeng isang araw lang, dalawang araw, meron ko lang sinat. Uh, letter B, personal leave. Is it letter C, vacation leave? It should be letter D, indefinite leave. Kasi when you say indefinite, hindi mo alam kung kailan ka babalik. Okay? Because of course, it says here, it requires more than one year. Alright, now we go to the last legal base that we have here, Education Act of 1982, also known as BP Batas Pambansa 232. This provides for the rights and responsibilities of the members of the educational community. That includes the parents, the school, the students, the school personnel, including the academic teaching staff, the school administrators, academic non-teaching staff, and non-academic staff. Now, um, of course, when you say academic teaching staff here, these are your teachers, school administrator, administrators more principal, um, assistant principal mo, yung um, mga school heads mo, no? school, uh, head teachers mo. Academic non-teaching staff, these are your librarians, these are your guidance counselors. Okay, so sila po yung sa academic non-teaching staff. And of course, your non-academic staff, these are the janitors. Okay, so janitors mo, yung mga custodians mo, yung mga uh, clerk, for example, yung mga hindi, hindi uh, non-academic ang kanilang assignments. All right. Now, Education Act of 1982, still Section 9. Okay, so isa-isa hina naman po natin yung iba-ibang sections na lumalabas sa let. Okay, so Section 9 here, Rights of Students in School. The students have the right to freely choose, okay, to freely choose their field of, of study subject to existing curricula and to continue their course therein up to graduation, except in cases of academic deficiency, violation of disciplinary regulations. So, may freedom po na mag-choose ang isang estudyante basta nasa existing curricula lang kung anong subjects yung kukunin nila, except pag meron siyang academic deficiency. Okay, meron siyang bagsak or meron siyang violate na disciplinary regulation. Meron siyang ginawang uh, against sa disciplinary guidelines ng school. Section number 8, the rights of parents. The right to access to any official record directly relating to the children who are under their parental responsibility. So, dapat eh, wag mong itago sa isang parent 
ang ang card, report card, ang grades ng kanyang estudyante o kanyang anak. Basta anak niya, kahit na hindi siya adopted lang niya, basta siya yung legal guardian, siya yung parent ng anak ng ng estudyante mo, dapat e eh, ipakita mo sa kanya ang grades ng anak niya because she or he has a right to access to any official school record. Okay, so that's the rights of parents. Bawal lang pong ipakita ang score or grade ng iba pang estudyante sa kanya. So, pag sinabi niya, ah, ito pala nakuha ng anak ko, kaya second lang siya, pwede ko pa makita yung card ng first at matingnan ko kung bakit, uh, bakit siya lumamang sa aking, sa aking anak. Bawal po yun. Hindi pwede ipakita yung grades ng ibang student. So, yung po pwede lang, eh, meron lang siyang right doon sa grades ng sarili niyang anak. Uh, we go to section 11, special rights of academic staff. Uh, these are for the teachers. The right to be free from compulsory compulsory assignments not related to their duties as defined in their appointments or employment contracts unless compensated therefore conformably to existing law. So, pwedeng, oh, uh, hindi mo pwedeng i-assign siya bilang coordinator nito, bilang coach nito, unless compensated siya at unless gusto niya. Okay, wala pong makaka-force sa inyo na principal nyo na kailangan eh, i-handle nyo talaga yung club na to. Number two, the right to intellectual property consistent, consistent with applicable laws. Okay, so meron kayong intellectual property. Pag meron kayong ginawang research at kinlaim ito ng iyong head teacher, for example, your master teacher or yung principal mo, eh pwede mo po siyang idemanda ng violation ng iyong intellectual property. Number three, teachers shall be deemed persons in authority when in the discharge of lawful duties and responsibilities and shall therefore be accorded due respect and protection. So, dapat nire-respect ang ating mga guro dahil tayo po ay persons in authority. Number four, teachers shall be accorded the opportunity to choose alternative career lines either in school administration, in classroom teaching, or others for purposes of career advancement. So, hindi po pwedeng pagbawalan mong isang guro na mag-apply bilang, bilang head teacher, bilang principal. Okay? for That's for his or her career advancement. So, kailangan po na meron siyang right or meron siyang opportunity to choose his or her career lines. Now, still under BP232, section number 13, Rights of Schools. The right for institutions of higher learning to determine on academic grounds who shall be admitted to study, who may teach, and what shall be subjects of the study and research. Now, this is for higher learning. So, nasa universities na po to and colleges. So, they have the right to admit who, who will study. So, meron silang entrance exams na tinatawag. Who may teach. Alam nila kung paano iha-hire ang kanilang teachers. And what shall be the subjects of the study and research. Okay, so that's section number 13. Now we go to question number 20. School personnel like librarians, guidance counselors, research assistants, and aides belong to this group. Is it the teaching or academic staff? Is it the school personnel? It is, is this the non-academic personnel? Is, or is this the academic non-teaching personnel? Teaching or academic staff, teachers lang po yung meron tayo dito. School personnel, this is the broad term. Okay, sakop na po niya lahat ng personnel sa isang school. Non-academic personnel, ito po yung ating mga uh, janitors, custodians. Okay, or is it letter D, academic non-teaching personnel? The correct answer, of course, is letter D, the academic non-teaching personnel sila. So, academic non-teaching personnel, academic dahil librarian sila, guidance counselor, research assistant, meaning eh, meron pa rin silang certain, certain qualifications, hindi po pwedeng kahit sino lang ilagay mo. Dapat eh, meron pa rin silang license as guidance counselor, license as librarian, um... Uh, pero hindi sila nagtuturo kaya tinatawag silang academic non-teaching personnel now question number 21 the right of students to receive relevant quality education is primarily achieved through uh, the right of students to receive relevant quality education is received through competent instruction strong curriculum school community relations competent 
administration saan our administrator saan kaya dito yung correct answer paano nakukuha or na-achieve ang quality education ng mga mag-aaral ang correct answer here of course would be letter A through competent instruction so nakukuha lamang po natin quality education pag maganda maayos sa pagtuturo maayos magagaling ang ating mga professor magagaling ang ating mga teachers kasi pag magaling na teacher ang meron tayo sa isang school kahit na medyo mahina yung mga estudyante ay alam niya kung paano sila uh, paano sila mag-learn okay? kung anong strategy yung gagamitin niya sa mga estudyante medyo kailangan pang i-push kailangan pang i-motivate at kung anong gagawin niya sa mga estudyante mabilis nang makagrasp ng lessons or ng, ng concepts okay? so letter A is the correct answer here pag meron kang strong curriculum pero hindi naman maganda ang pagtuturo mo wala din Okay, kung school community relations mo ay napakaganda pero mahina ang instruction, wala din quality education. Kahit na gaano pakagaling ang iyong principal, iyong assistant principal, mga head teachers mo, kung hindi magagaling yung mga teachers mo mismo, eh wala pa rin mangyayari sa iyong mga sudyante. Number 22, a student has the right to freely choose his or her field of study up to graduation except when the student is it letter A incurs academic deficiencies letter B violates disciplinary regulations letter C chooses to transfer to other school the correct answer is of course letter D both A and B so klarong-klaro kanina sinabi natin pag mayroon siyang academic deficiency or nakapag-violate siya ng disciplinary regulation ay wala na siyang freedom to choose okay so that's letter D 23. Which member of the educational community has the right to access any official record directly relating to the children under their parental responsibility? So, yung hint mo po dito, pinaka word dito sa ating question is parental. Okay? Parental responsibility. Okay? So, of course, the correct answer would be our parents. Okay? So, the parents here would be the correct answer. Number 24, which is the right of a teaching or academic staff? The right of the issuance of official of official school records and documents, the right to provide proper proper governance of the school, the right to intellectual property consistent with applicable laws, or letter D, all of the above. Okay, so ito po yung tanong po ay right of a teaching or academic staff. Okay? Now, pag nakikita nyo, sa so nakikita nyo po, letter A and B here are the rights of your administrators. Hindi po ito sa cloud ng ating teacher. Ang teachers po, hindi nagbibigay ng uh, nag issue ng official school records and documents. Po, pwedeng grades lang, pero hindi yung ibang documents mismo. The right to provide proper governance of the school. So, ito po ay under na sa ating admin. Okay, correct answer. So, we can choose, that's why we cannot choose letter D. The correct answer be letter C. The right to intellectual property consistent with applicable laws. Alright, number 25. Which is not a right of an institution of higher learning to determine on academic ground who shall be admitted to study, who may teach, what shall be the subject of study and research, when to open the academic year. Okay, so this was mentioned in our discussion, who shall be admitted to study. So that's why meron siya mga entrance exams, who may teach. Okay, letter C, what shall be the subject of study and research? The correct answer is letter D. Wala po to sa right ng ating institution of higher learning. When to open the academic year? Ito po is saklaw pa din since we are talking about higher learning. Saklaw po siya ng ating CHED Commission on Higher Education. Okay, so that's letter D. When to open the academic year? Alright, num- uh, we go before we go to the remaining five questions that we have, these are the other important legislations that we have. The first one is the Alternative Learning System or ALS. This is a parallel learning system to provide a viable alternative to the existing formal education instruction. Okay, so parallel po siya, halos magkapareho yung kanyang curriculum, pero binibigay po siya 
sa mga students na walang access sa formal education instruction po pwedeng dahil nag uh, nagtatrabaho sila in the same, at the same time. Now, what are the three major ALS programs? The first one is basic literacy program. Binibigay po to sa mga hindi pa talaga nakakapag-aral, hindi pa talaga nakakapag-umpisa, wala pang basic literacy, wala pang basic na writing, basic na reading. Okay, so that's your basic literacy program. Accreditation and equivalency program, ito po ay pwede nang ibigay sa mga out of school youth na nakapag-aral at baka po pwedeng pumasa at pwedeng uh, makapag-aral sa college na, no? Pagkatapos nang ipasa ang kanyang accreditation. Now, the last one is Indigenous People's Education Program. Ito po, of course, ay ginagawa sa mga indigenous communities natin. Okay, now, question number 26. Pedro dropped out in high school. High school po siya na drop out. He's now 16 years old and he'd like to continue his studies. What program in the Bureau of Alternative Learning System can you best recommend to him? So, sinabi po natin ang tatlong programa ng ALS a while ago. Dahil, uh, as sabi po dito, si Pedro ay nag drop out sa high school na. So, meaning, eh, marunong na siyang magbasa, uh, hopefully, no? Marunong siyang magsulat, marunong siyang ng basic arithmetic skills. So, we cannot give him or we cannot recommend the basic literacy program na anymore. Is it indigenous people's education program? Hindi naman sinabi na isang indigenous person si Pedro. So, we also cannot choose none of the above because our correct answer is letter B, accreditation and equivalency program. So, again, we give this, we recommend this to Pedro dahil nag-drop out siya, nasa high school na siya, 16 years old na siya, and he'd only like to continue his studies. So, letter B is the correct answer. 27. Nanay Onesta, 62 years old, wants to learn how to read and write. What program in the Bureau of Alternative Learning System can you best recommend to her? Now, this time, si Nanay Onesta wants to really learn how to read and write. Hindi pa siya marunong magbasa, hindi pa siya marunong magsulat. Which means na wala pa siyang basic literacy. So, what we can recommend her is the basic literacy program. Hindi po indigenous si Nanay Onesta. Hindi din siya po pwede sa accreditation and equivalency program. So, letter C is the correct answer. Number 28. This school offers a complete basic education in one school site with unified instructional programs under one school head. Okay, so merong basic education. Again, pag sinasabi natin basic education, merong primary, uh, merong elementary, and merong high school in one school site with unified instructional program. So, continuous ang instructional program nila under one school head. Meron lang silang isang principal. Uh, kadalasan nito ay meron din silang preparatory, meron din silang kindergarten. Is it called the learning centers, comprehensive school, cluster of schools, or integrated schools? Correct answer is letter D, integrated. Kaya siya tinawag na in integrated. Okay? Magkakasama sila, nakakakumpul-kumpul sila, iisa lang ang kanilang instructional program at meron lang silang isang head. Now, number 29. Second to the last na to. Which community program is consistent with the ECCD system? Okay, before we go to our, uh, our choices here, what is this ECCD? This is under Republic Act number 8980, which was uh, signed December 5, 2000, an act promulgating a comprehensive policy and a national system for early childhood care and development. So, sinasabi dito, the state should promote the rights of children to survival, development, and special protection with full recognition of the nature of childhood and its special needs. So, dapat eh, pinopromote ng state, ng ating pamahalaan, ang rights ng children para maka-survive, maka-develop at meron silang of course special protection dahil syempre bata pa sila hindi pa nila kaya nagabayan ang kanilang sarili. Okay, so we go back to our question. Which community program is consistent with the ECCD system? Now, also very important term here is community. Community program po siya. Establishing daycare, health and child mining centers, conducting trainings on effective parenting, Letter C, both A and B. Letter D, neither A and B. The correct answer, of course, would be letter C, both A and B. Kailangan may daycare, health, and child mining centers. And of course, meron ding effective parenting na training sa binibigay ang ating mga barangay, ating mga bayan, ating mga lungsod. Okay, so letter C is the correct answer.
Now we go to the last question that we have. Which assistance can be provided to a recipient school under an adopt a school program? Okay, now before we go to our choices, let's take a look at our provisions in, ad in adopt a school program. This is RA number 8525, an act establishing an, an, an adopt a school program which allows private entities to assist a public school in but not limited to the following areas staff and faculty development for training and further education construction of facilities upgrading of existing facilities provision of books publications and other instructional materials and modernization of instructional technologies okay so yung mga private institutions po natin ay po pwedeng mag-adapt ng isang school at kailangan po nilang turuan uh, itrain i-guide ang mga teachers doon para mas maging magaling. Kailangan po nilang magbigay ng mga facilities, kailangan nilang i-upgrade ang mga facilities na meron na sa school na yon. Magbigay ng books, ng other instructional materials, and of course, instructional technologies. Now, we go back to our question. Which assistance can be provided to a recipient school under an adopt a school program? Is it additional teacher allowance? Minibigyan ba ng pera ng additional allowance ng teachers? Modernization of instructional technologies? Letter C, B only? Or letter D, both A and B? So, klarong-klaro, wala pong sinabi kanina na merong additional allowance. Wala pong perang binibigay. Training lamang po, guidance lamang po, teaching lamang po ng mga teachers doon sa naturang school. So, yung answer natin would only be letter B. Okay? So, that's modernization of instructional technologies. Okay. So, yung answer nito ay pwedeng C. Maari na namang B, no? Pero ang correct answer dito would be letter C because it says B only kasi meron kang option na maaring both A and B. Okay? So, letter C should be your choice. Alright. So, then po nagtatapos ang ating discussion ng teaching profession. So, muli ito po ang inyong Gurong Pinoy. Bumalik po kayo sa iba pa nating mga discussion. If meron po kayong comments or meron po kayong mga suggestions sa mga susunod, susunod nating videos, eh, i-write lamang po ninyo sa ating comment box below. So, muli ito po si Coach Mac, ninyong Gurong Pinoy, na nagsasabing maliit man na butil ng mga kaalaman ang dulo nito ay malaking kaginhawaan. Maraming salamat po, mga kaguro. Good luck sa nalalapit ninyong let exam.